So, and now we dive right in and briefly recap what has happened. For two weeks, now, we've been experiencing a tectonic crisis at Santorini in the Aegean. And I believe we're now at over 14,000 individual tremors. So, a total of 14,000 earthquakes have been recorded. And most of them are weak, used to barely noticeable. Many, but also relatively strong. And by that, I mean over five on the magnitude scale. And these magnitude five quakes can be clearly felt and suggest that something bigger might be brewing here. Why are the volcanologists so concerned? Because these events suggest that in the end, there could either be a strong aftershock with a magnitude over six or might seven, or an underwater volcanic eruption. Both events could lead to a tsunami. Such occurrences have happened quite often in the past. In 1956, among other instances, there were 20 meter high waves that devastated the island of Amorgos. In 1600 BC, we had the Minoan tsunami that devastated the island of Crete, and it could have served as a model for the legend of Atlantis and the high culture of the Minoans. So we see the region is highly active, both volcanically and tectonically. And hence the current concern that this seismic crisis could end in such a worst case scenario. So that was the rough summary. Now let's take a look at what has happened since yesterday. There is some good news. The number of earthquakes has continued to decrease. Let's open our beautiful map here. We have this live earthquake map here where we can see all the earthquakes worldwide. It's really exciting to observe this, especially because you always see that along this Pacific Ring of Fire, there's always something going on. But today we are interested in Europe, and you can see that we have had relatively few new earthquakes. The yellow dots are the earthquakes within the last seven days. And the, the blue ones, earthquakes, are those within the last 24 hours. And you can see we have relatively few. So the stream veterans among you will remember, we've also had days when everything here was full of blue dots. There was really a lot going on then. Well, these are only the stronger earthquakes now. We don't know how many weaker earthquakes there were, but there were relatively few of the stronger earthquakes, namely only two with a magnitude over four. This here is uh, around, happened yesterday at 4.40 p.m. yesterday afternoon. And this one at 4.42 p.m., so relatively close to each other after our stream yesterday. So that's already some good news. We have fewer earthquakes. The reason why I still wrote in the title that the earthquakes are getting stronger is because the position of these earthquakes here is not particularly reassuring. Let's put it that way. We had this a few days ago. We had these two earthquakes here. And now these here. And those of you who have been following for a while already know what kind of position this is. It's my located directly above the Columbus volcano. This is really impressive. Someone took the effort to plot all the earthquakes on a three-dimensional map. And here, both the earthquake magnitude and depth, as well as the volcanic system, are animated. So I think it's a great map. And you can see here very clearly that we have two active volcanoes here. Two larger volcanoes. Oh, a 20 euro donation is coming in from Alluvium. Thank you very much, dear Alluvium. Incredibly generous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll probably do it again like this, that I collect the donations at the end and read them out. That means if someone donates now or becomes a channel member, and if I don't read it out immediately, don't be sad. I will read it at the end, I promise. So thank you very much, dear Alluvium. So we have here the Santorini Volcano, there it is, and the Columbus Volcano. The Santorini Volcano is currently not suspicious, so the... It has risen slightly four days ago, but it looks like there is even something on Instagram. It looks like nothing is happening there. The Columbus Volcano, on the other hand, is the suspicious volcano here, and you see they are probably both fed from the same magmatic system underground. Imagine we are here in the middle of the Earth's crust and somewhere deep down is this magma source, so to speak. From there, magma rises upwards and then makes its way here to exits on the surface. You have to imagine that magma always seeks the path of least resistance. I'll show you the subduction map again. 
Sven is rightly writing that you can't easily get the donkey off the island. I asked myself that too. Even if you wanted to get your donkey off the island, how would you do that? How do you transport a donkey? No idea. Um, well... So... Here you can see it perfectly. So... Plates. Meat. Tectonic plates. One plate slides under the other. This is called subduction. And... Yes. It then slides deep into the earth. It gets hotter there. The plate melts. And the melted plate material rises here as magma. But it seeks the path of least resistance. That means where there might already be fractures in the Earth's crust, and that's where the magma rises. This means it doesn't necessarily have to be directly under the plate boundary. That is important to understand. Let's take another look at the plate boundaries. Plate tectonics. Because, if that were the case, we would only have volcanoes exactly at the fracture edges here. But that's not the case. We see it in the Aegean. There we are a bit. Away from the plate boundary, but there the magma found its way, perhaps because the Earth's crust was brittle there. And that's how it happens that we have these magma flows going a bit diagonally upwards, and they emerge at different points on Earth. This is how the Santorini volcano and the Columbo's volcano formed right next to each other here. So, and these two new earthquakes we just had, they are directly above Columbo's. Let's pull up another map, which we also have in the link list. This one, bam, it's also very practical. I'll just take a sip. Coffee. Our espresso machine was broken, now it's fixed again. I'm glad to finally have good coffee again. Write to me about what kind of coffee machine you have, I'd be interested. Do you have a pod machine, or a capsule machine, an espresso machine, or do you drink instant coffee? Or do you not drink coffee at all? Well, I really like our espresso machine. Okay, so here we are. Here's the Santorini volcano. Here's the Columbus volcano, right next to each other, deep. Down in the Earth's crust fed from the same magma source. And if we look at this now, and this here, we see that these quakes occurred directly above the Columbus volcano. And we've had this happen quite often in the past. Overall, the seismic movement seems to be shifting a bit towards Columbus. And this strongly suggests that there has been magma activity here from the beginning. Just as a reminder, this is the big debate among volcanologists. Is there... magma activity here, therefore, a risk of volcanic eruption? Or is it purely tectonic, therefore just quakes? That's the big debate. And this here is another piece of the puzzle, which shows, oh wow, here is an active volcano. There could be an eruption here. And a volcanologist agrees with me on that. Let's take a look at it now. This is brand new. Before that, I'll quickly check what you're writing to me in the chat. I can't just ask questions, uh, and then not look. Holy. Exactly. Very good. Coffee is a magic potion. Absolutely. Ciao, everyone. Writes Giovanna. Ciao, Giovanna. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I have to read this donation out loud right away. I can't wait until the end. Rene da Cast has donated 100 Swiss francs. I could almost buy a new fully automatic machine with that. So dear Rene, thank you very much, but of course I won't do that. As I said, half goes to the Animal Protection Association in Santorini. So dear Rene, you have made an incredibly generous donation. I'm turning all red. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Dear Rene, thank you, thank you very much. That is unbelievably generous, especially in such a beautiful inflation-proof world. Currency like the Swiss franc. So I am really very happy about that. Thank you, dear Rene. I will read this out again at the end and express my gratitude once more exuberantly. Oh. Okay, folks. So let's first take a look at why a volcanic eruption is becoming more likely. Here it is. Santorini volcanologist suspects volcanic eruption. Just like us. We've been working on this a bit over the last few days. That contrary to the opinion of some experts, magma activity is likely present here. But let's read what this volcanologist says. Decrease in seismic activity at Santorini. Volcanologist suspects volcanic eruption. The earthquake swarm northeast of the Greek island of Santorini has significantly decreased in intensity since yesterday. That's good. Today, no earthquakes with a magnitude greater than 4 have been recorded. We have seen it here. The last two larger ones were yesterday afternoon. 
that's already good, although it could also be a bit of the calm before the storm. The last moderate earthquake occurred yesterday evening at 11.02 p.m. It had a magnitude of 4.3 and a focal depth of only 5 kilometers. This will soon become important. And by the way, on this nice representation here, we can clearly see the depth. We see that almost all these quakes are very close to the surface. So really like 1 to 8 kilometers. There are a few outliers, but most of them are very, very high up, and this will soon become important. Since then, there have been several weak quakes, which are mainly in the range of micro-seismicity. These tremors probably occurred all along, but could not be detected on the seismograms due to the stronger quakes occurring in quick succession. However, there is still no reason to give the all clear. It could be a new earthquake. Earthquake pulses follow. So, it's super important to emphasize this. These swarm quakes occur somewhat erratically. So, it could very well be that we have a day of relative calm now, and then tomorrow several quakes again, with a magnitude over 5 on the scale. To confirm a trend here, we would need several days of low activity, so we cannot yet speak of a trend of calm. Michael writes, I also say it looks southwest. Absolutely, at the moment it looks that way. And directly southwest lies the Columbus volcano. But we'll keep looking into this. While most Greek seismologists continue to assume a purely tectonic origin of the quakes, this assessment is beginning to crumble. I'm a bit proud of us because we've been working this out over the past few days. And actually, most of us have been in agreement from the start. That there are many indications here of volcanic activity, and now you can see that more and more experts are seeing it that way too. Already the day before yesterday, seismologist Akis Silentes resigned from the Earthquake Hazard Security Council. He justified his resignation with the assumption that economic interest groups had influenced his colleagues' risk assessments. Now the renowned volcanologist Luca Daria also commented to the Spanish online magazine. What is it? What is 20 in Spanish? 20. That's Italian, right? Well, 20 minutos about the situation in Santorini. The volcano expert is observing the situation from Tenerife. Also interesting because in Tenerife we currently also have volcanic activity. By the way, I just noticed that a lot of donations are coming in. Thank you everyone, I will read them all out at the end. So, don't feel ignored. I see it and I'm delighted. And everything will be read out at the end. So thank you very very much, I'm really thrilled. And the animals on Santorini of course as well. The volcano expert is observing the situation from Tenerife and says the tremors are of volcanic origin. Aha! Uh -huh. He does not rule out that an underwater eruption could occur. It might even already be underway. So far so good. So let's briefly summarize again. The earthquake activity has, and this is good, decreased. Both in terms of number and intensity. This doesn't mean anything yet, because this has only been the case for one or two days now. To really establish a trend, we need to wait longer. What so doesn't make us so optimistic, however, is that the earthquakes have shifted more towards Columbo's, and that more and more volcanologists are saying they believe an underwater eruption could be the outcome here, and how intense that will be is just guesswork. It could be that it goes well and it's weak, and the crisis is over. It could be that it's strong, and we experience a tsunami, and anyone who says that's absurd and far-fetched Something like that happened in 1956. Exactly, the earthquake of 1956 that created a tsunami. We can briefly read what it says here. Exactly, this quake had a magnitude of 7.7 .7 and was therefore significantly stronger than the quakes we have had now. And yes, 53 people died, over 100 were injured. A huge tsunami that hit the island of Amogos and that was only in 1956. Some of us were already in the world then. That means it's not completely unrealistic for something like this to happen. Let's hope for the best that if a volcanic eruption occurs, then it won't be so severe. 